Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm going to show you yet another enhancement that I have paired with the dynamic analytics line that I built a while back. Now what you can do is be able to conditionally highlight the column above and below that analytics line, helping to further highlight the values. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So to start with, I want to mention that this file is built off of the previous dynamic analytics line that I built, which allows you to be able to select as an example from average to median, percentage of max, even be able to change the slider here to actually change where that value is. So if you actually want to see how that was built, I'll link you to that video over on the left or down in this video's description. But the goal of this video is to focus on the fact that these colors that you see here are changing when they are above versus below that analytics line. As I change this percentage of max, you can see that the green adheres to just going above the line with everything else below it staying gray. And that can be observed across any of these other selections. So let's go ahead and see how that was built. I'm going to select this visual here. And you might notice that I'm using under the visualization section, the stacked column chart. And I actually have two DAX measures that are in here for my value selection. I have my sales below selection and sales above selection. If I actually hover over any of the columns over here, you'll notice with the tooltip that there's my sales above selection plus also a total. So I can actually see the value above it, I can see the value below it here, and that grand total that's both showing on the data label plus in that tooltip. So all three cuts of the data are being shown. And the reason I'm able to do this, first and foremost, is the fact that under the format painter for a stack column, I now have an option for a total label, which is really convenient because that gives me that grand total regardless of where I am hovering. And this used to be something that was not available for many years for the stack column chart. So this is the number one thing that's really allowed me to do this with also being able to provide all three cuts of that data. Now, the measures themselves are fairly straightforward. If I select this, I have two variables being calculated. I have my sales amount here. I'm also doing a calculation against my analytics line. And the thing that I'm doing here is I'm clearing the month and the year because otherwise for any of these column categories, there would be a filter to that specific month. So the analytics value would actually be changing. So that's the way I'm able to basically get a static 9.42 million in this example calculated into this variable. And then I run an if statement to check to see if the analytics amount or the above line, if it is less than my sales amount, meaning the line is below, I want you to take the sales amount minus that analytics amount. So that's how it's able to get the top piece right here as this top section of the subtotal. And similarly, if I come to the below one, I'm doing a similar calculation for that bottom half. So if the analytics amount is less than the sales amount, meaning the sales amount is above it, then simply return whatever that is, which is just the value below that analytics line. Otherwise, return the sales amount. And that alternative condition is when it's below the analytics line. So in this case, just the 4 million or the 5 million. And both of those combined gets that really nice perspective where you're able to just get a nice clean call out for all those calculations that are at the top. So I really like the way that this just calls out the values that you care about as a KPI. Now I will mention there's one other thing that I was wanting to add to this, which is some cool toggles actually for the total labels where I want them to be visible above the analytics line for those columns that are above it and then invisible below it. Unfortunately, from what I can tell, there's a bug right there at the moment where I actually can't format them conditionally. If you find a way to do that, let me know. But at the current moment, I'm not able to figure it out and I did submit a ticket to Microsoft. So hopefully that gets resolved soon, but that will be a follow-up video that I'll do as an even further addition to this one once that gets fixed. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member. Last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below. So until next time.